Hello everybody, this is Tim here again. Another leprechaun. Do not take this shit seriously. If you take this shit seriously and you're expecting a hardcore horror film, don't bother watching it. Don't bother. How you could take this seriously, knowing the plot that's about a killer leprechaun, I have no idea. But, either way, uh, I just want to get that out of the way there. This is a film about a killer leprechaun. So this is a B-movie. It's a B-movie. It's a B-movie horror comedy. Now, the questions, basically, how to judge something like this is, is it funny? Is it entertaining? Is it enjoyable to watch? Is Warwick Davis good? I'll just go ahead and say it. Warwick Davis is fine. He does the leprechaun absolutely fine. He's a good actor. He does fine. I like Warwick Davis. I like Willow. Um... But some of the stuff they got written for his character to do in the film is not that interesting. And the way the Leprechaun's portrayed in the film, he's... I know that it's a, a stupid idea for a killer, a killer Leprechaun. I know this is a horror comedy B-movie. But the way the Leprechaun acts, like, they, they make him act really mischievous and childish. But they make him act too childish sometimes where he just comes off as stupid. Where he, like, runs to the house and he's like, Diddle diddle dee a Leprechaun me! And I'm like, shut the fuck up, but whatever. Those lines are horrible. Uh, it would have been funnier uh, if they played the comedy more more subtle and less in your face, I think. It, they make the Leprechaun actual, instead of the movie being funny, uh, the actual character of the Leprechaun is made into a joke sometimes. And if the character is a joke, um, and it's not a very funny joke and just kind of a stupid, obnoxious joke, then that automatically kills part of the movie right there. So basically, you got to set up this guy. He stole the leprechaun's gold. Uh, he's living out in a fucking uh, Kansas, hell, I don't know, somewhere, some small town place or whatever. Of course, it's in a house where there's no neighbors anywhere. Uh, well, obviously, it's not Kansas, but yeah. You get what I'm saying. It's a town. I mean, it's a house in the middle of fucking nowhere. But, uh, he stole the leprechaun's gold. One thing I find funny is he jerks out, like, all the gold coins. And his wife is like, don't make up stories about leprechauns or something like that. She's like, you're a drunken fool, you know. She obviously doesn't believe him about him stealing the shit from a leprechaun, but she just dismisses. She, I mean, she doesn't press, you know, the, to question him where he got, like, you know, a billion dollars worth in gold, gold coins, I'd still be like, well, I don't believe leprechauns or anything, but where the fuck did you get all that money? But whatever. So, uh, he leaves, the leprechaun is there, um, uh, you get one kind of little creepy moment here, where the leprechaun's, like, doing a child's voice, and he's singing, Mary had a little lamb. That's, like, the only time there's any kind of remotely tension in this film. This film is not scary, unless you're like a little kid. If you're getting scared of this as an adult, then, brother, I don't know what to tell you. But, uh, fucking bug. But, uh, anyway. But, um, yeah, this film's not scary. But this moment right here has got a little bit of tension to it. So she goes, the leprechaun pops up out of a suitcase. You get the first death scene. It's pretty lackluster. I, pretty shitty, really, to be honest. The leprechaun just comes at her. She just keeps backing up, falls down the stairs, breaks her neck. No blood, no nothing. She just falls down the stairs, breaks her neck. I'm like, wow. Just wow. <laughs> That's pretty fucking bad. Um, the guy comes home. You get one little funny thing here. The leprechaun's like talking in the guy's dead wife's voice. And he walks out. And he's like carrying some tea. And he's looking at him. And he goes, where did you hide the gold, Dan? Did you hide it somewhere near the house? <laughs> I thought that was funny. That made me laugh. Um, of course, he jerks out a four-leaf clover. And one thing I find funny is how Warwick Davis, as the leprechaun, reacts to the four-leaf clover. He's like, keep it away! Put it away! <laughs> like, really over the top. I thought that was hilarious. I mean, I don't know if that's meant to be serious, but that made me fucking laugh. But, uh, he's chasing after the leprechaun. He, sh he fucking guns the leprechaun down, basically. Um, one thing I that's kind of stupid is he's, like, shooting him. And then you hear the leprechaun, like, in the background, like, oh, your bullets won't stop me forever. I'll keep coming back. I'm like, wow, that scene is played so well. I mean, so good. Not. <laughs> but, uh, anyway. So he fucking takes the leprechaun, dumps his ass into a crate, nails it up. He's going to burn the little bastard, and then he fucking passes out from a stroke. <laughs> so you skip, like, I don't know how many years. I forgot. You got Jennifer Aniston in this film. I think this was her first film. She's really hot. 
uh, watch this film at least for her ass and her shorts in this film. That's at least one reason. Well, two reasons her ass cheeks. Watch this film. That's two reasons, I guess. But, uh, it's her first film. Her acting is alright. Sometimes she does some stupid shit. Like, there's a scene with the Leprechaun, like, grabs her and kisses her on the side of the face. And then she gets loose, starts running away, and he just, like, barely, like, pecked her on the cheek with a kiss. She's running away, and she's like, oh, I'm really over the top. And I'm like, shut the fuck up. But anyway, other than that, her acting's pretty decent. I mean, all right in the movie. Um, so we're, they're moving into the house, basically. Well, I don't understand. Jennifer Aniston's character looks like she's, like, 20. She looks like she's, like, 20-something year old, right? And, uh, she's moving into this house way out in the middle of nowhere with her father. And I'm thinking... Why? Why? Why are you? Why is she even still living with her dad? Her like twenty something year old. I mean, I know some people. Yeah, they stay and with their parents for a long time. But I mean, really. And it looks like she has money too, because she's able to check in. She always wants to check into a hotel, and she's talking about how she's got credit cards and everything. And I'm like, why the fuck are you even here if you don't want to live here, <laughs> or if you don't want to live with your dad? But whatever. So they go to see the house. The house is a piece of shit. Uh, she hates it. She says, fuck this. I'm out. Um, there's this guy outside who paints. He looks almost like Kevin Bacon, so I'll call him Kevin Bacon 2.0. Um, Kevin Bacon 2.0 flirts with Jennifer Aniston. They kind of hit it off. The guy's all right. He plays the character of Nathan. He's okay. His, he's got a little brother uh, who's friends with this like handicapped guy who's the guy from like Pee-wee's Big Adventure. Um, he's all right. He's likable. I, I don't mind him. I don't really mind any of the actors in the film, personally. The acting's okay to all right, um, which is fine. So, one thing leads to another. We've got a lot of jump scares in this movie. The movie can't possibly make the Leprechaun character scary at all, so they just give you a lot of jump scares. Uh, the handicapped guy, Ozzy is the character's name, goes into the basement. He puts his head down to the crate with the Leprechaun's in it. Of course you know the Leprechaun's hand is going to come busting up through it. Uh, right before that, he knocks the foliar clover off the crate, so the leprechaun's able to leave the crate. The leprechaun gets out. You got the, the score for this movie is like a little Irish jingle that plays um, <laughs> that plays through the whole movie. Uh, it's all right. I don't mind it. I mean, what else would you expect to play in a movie about a killer leprechaun, music-wise? He runs up to him. The leprechaun brags about how he was a shoemaker by trade. Uh, he threatens to bite the Aussie's ear off. Ozzy gets away. Uh, the leprechaun uses magic. Uh, you got like this special effect where it's like this green magical looking shit that comes out of the leprechaun's hand that makes the door slam. But Ozzy manages to get it open. <laughs> the leprechaun says they, his powers are weak. He needs his gold. So apparently the longer he's away, the longer he's away from his gold is the weaker he gets. Um, magical wise. So Ozzy gets away. He tells everybody about the leprechaun. Nobody believes him. Uh, they go in there. You get another false scare. And it, they're looking for the leprechaun. They get a rat that pops out. And I'm like, wow, movie. Just wow. Um, um, then Ozzy and uh, the little boy, who is Nathan's brother. I'm trying to remember his name. Fuck, I don't know this little kid's name. I don't remember his name. Um, Alex. That's it. His name was Alex. There we go. I had to squeeze that one out there. Okay, so Ozzy and Alex, they find the leprechaun's gold at the end of a rainbow, of course. In an old beat up all the shit truck. Uh, Ozzy swallows one of the gold coins on accident because he was biting on it to see if it was real because he saw that in the movie apparently. So he swallows it. Of course, you know this is going to be a plot point. It's obviously a setup point here because the leprechaun will need to kill Ozzy to get all his gold. Um, one thing leads to another. Uh, the, le the leprechaun's like acting like a cat and the father of Jennifer Aniston is so fucking stupid. He sticks his hand inside this tree log and you know something bad's gonna happen. It's so obvious. The leprechaun bites his hand and I'm like, no fucking shit, Sherlock. Don't stick your hand in a fucking uh, area that you can't see. Or at least look in it first. But anyway. So they take him to the hospital. He's gone. He's out of the movie. Dad never comes back. So I can just imagine after all this is over, they go to the dad and they're like, he's like, what the fuck happened? It's like, the dad, leprechauns, shit happens. <laughs> anyway, uh, that just makes me laugh that his character just completely disappears. Why even have him in the movie, seriously? But anyway, so the leprechaun follows him in the town. Um, 
Ozzy and Alex, they take one of the coins to this uh, coin dealership guy or whatever, so he can identify it and tell him how much it's worth. He's going to keep it overnight. Leprechaun comes in there, kills the guy with a fucking pogo stick, jumps up on top of his body with it, I mean his stomach, and crushes his chest, I guess. Kills him. Uh, it's okay, death scene. You get some blood uh, in, coming up out of the guy's mouth and stuff in his face while he's getting the leprechaun jumping on his body with a fucking pogo stick. Uh, it's an okay death scene. You get the leprechaun fucking steals a, a car, takes off riding with it. Uh, well, a toy car, might I add. Uh, and then hits the road with it. Uh, the leprechaun gets pulled over by a cop who is a fucking horrible actor. This guy sucks so bad. I wouldn't be surprised if he never, he never was in another fucking movie again. Um... One thing I did find funny, though, he's like, he looks at the leprechaun and he says, aren't we a little young to be out this late? And Warren Davis says, no, I'm 600 years old. I thought that was mildly amusing. Um, uh, fucking leprechaun chases the cop into the woods. You get an amusing scene where the cop's looking around everywhere and the leprechaun keeps pop popping up from behind each one of the trees and he's like, I'm over here! <laughs> the leprechaun, like, fucking takes off running into the woods and disappears. The cop thinks he's okay. He sets down uh, at a tree. Of course, you know the leprechaun's going to pop out. The leprechaun does pop out. Falls on the... Uh, lands on the guy's shoulders. Grabs the guy's neck and snaps it. Uh, okay, death scene. For a, a low-budget B-movie about a killer leprechaun. It's an okay death scene. Um, uh, the leprechaun goes back to the house. Takes out all the shoes. Shines them. You get a humorous scene. The leprechaun eats some lucky clovers instead of lucky charms because they couldn't get the rights to use the actual... Cereal, because it's probably too fucking expensive. Um, one thing I find really stupid is when they get back to the house, they're wondering what happened, and the guy that plays Nathan, he's whatever, he's like, it could have been a bear. And I'm like, could have been a bear? What kind of a fucking bear <laughs> busts into your house, tears up all your shit, takes your shoes, lines them up, and shines them all? <laughs> I can just see that on the news now. Uh, animal control, shoe shine bear, on the loose. I'm like, is this character retarded or something? I mean, I... I don't know what's going on here, the character of Nathan, because that was literally the stupidest fucking thing I have ever heard in a movie thus far. But anyway, so that was stupid as shit. Um, he goes outside to check out a noise. He trips over something, uh, which was like really... Sorry about that little edit there. Um, somebody was at the door. But anyway, uh, so Nathan goes outside to investigate a noise. He trips over something. He trips over a fucking barrel with a bear trap set in front of it that you can plainly see. Uh, he falls down, gets his leg caught in the bear trap. Leprechaun shows up. And then Nathan starts beating the shit out of the Leprechaun with a flashlight. And you can plainly tell it's a stuntman because the stuntman of the Leprechaun is like twice the size of Lord Davis. So I'm like, they couldn't find a, they couldn't find a stuntman of the same size, seriously. But anyway. So, so he beats the shit out of the leprechaun with a flashlight, knocks the leprechaun down. They run outside to help the leprechaun. Jennifer Aniston, I believe, hands in the shotgun, or Alex does one. He gets the shotgun, fucking guns the leprechaun down. Uh, he gets uh, One funny thing I like is Ozzy runs back in the house, calls the police, and he's like, Hello, we need the army, the navy, uh, paramedics, uh, the leprechaun's attacking, help. <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny. Um, so they get back in the house. Um, of course, they call to the cops call to get a deputy to send there, and the deputy they call is the one that the leprechaun's already killed. And one little funny thing here is the leprechaun's using the dead cop's voice, and he's like, "Sheriff, if I need backup, I'll radio for it." I thought that was kind of funny. Um, you get a rip-off scene here, a, a bad rip-off scene of a Nightmare on Elm Street that is so horrible. Later on, in, well, not here, but a little bit after. But this scene is like fucking horrible. It's such a rip-off of Nightmare on Elm Street. The leprechaun calls him on the phone. Jennifer Aniston rips the phone off the wall, throws it on the ground. She picks up the phone, and the leprechaun's like, uh, having problems, need a hand, and instead of a tongue coming through the phone like on a Nightmare on Elm Street, a fucking little mini hand comes through the phone, and I'm like, okay. Uh, but anyway, when they make it back in the house, the leprechaun comes chasing after him. They manage to not, uh, lop his hand off with the door. His hand actually crawls up the door and opens up uh, the door for him from the uh, inside. I thought that was kind of a neat little scene there, a neat little special effect. Not bad for a low-budget film. 
Leprechaun gets his hand, gets the fuck out of Dodge. Um, they realize they're going to have to kill the... Le well, she gives the Leprechaun his, his gold. Um, but of course, one's missing. Ta-da-da. The fat guy ate one. So the Leprechaun... They obviously know the Leprechaun's going to... They need to try to figure out how to kill him, basically. And they... So Jennifer Aniston uh, needs to go to the, host the arrest home to get the guys... To ask the guy from the beginning of the movie. Old Man Grady, I think's the character's name. How the fuck do you kill this thing? Um, so to distract the leprechaun, when they get outside, they throw a bunch of uh, shoes out in, <laughs> on the ground. He has to shine them all, so that gives Jennifer Aniston the time to get away. I thought that was mildly amusing. They're using one of the leprechaun's character traits to uh, against him. I thought that was okay. Um, you also had a scene in the film where uh, they were out in the truck, and they were going to try to take Nathan to a hospital, and the leprechaun fucking... Uh, goes into the barn, builds a little homemade car, rams the truck with it, flips it all the way over. Uh, I thought I, that was ridiculous, but mildly funny. Um, and one thing I did find funny is Leprechaun like opens up the door of the truck, and he's like, Where'd you go, me friends? <laughs> give me give me me gold back to a nice, harmless Leprechaun. I thought that was funny. <laughs> that was amusing. Um, what, one thing leads to another... Jennifer Aniston is making her way to the hospital eventually, or the rest home, I mean, to ask the old man Grady how the fuck do you kill this thing. Leprechaun appears on the back, holding to the back of the, the vehicle. Uh, he's on roller skates, and he loses his balance and goes through a fence and leaves a cartoon, Looney Tunes style cutout of his self in it. And I'm like, that's fucking ri just ridiculous. I, that's Movies almost killed it for me right there. But uh, he takes off after. She gets to the rest home. Of course, uh, she thinks she's talking to Old Man Grady, but it's really the Leprechaun. He's like, there's only one way to kill a Leprechaun. He turns around, he's like, but I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> and he takes off running after her in a, in a fucking wheelchair. He's like booking it in a wheelchair. It, this is I, this actually made me crack up just the sight of Warren Davis as a Leprechaun in a wheelchair. Fucking, uh, more like, it looked like 70 miles an hour almost in a wheelchair. That's pretty funny. She makes it into an elevator. And one thing I, another thing I thought was funny is you hear him. Uh, crash against the front of the elevator after the, the elevator doors are closed. I thought that was amusing. Old man Grady's body falls from out of the top of the elevator. Uh, he's like hanging there. Um, it's another jump scare, but it's one that's slightly effective, I guess, because of the you got a goofy scene right beforehand with the leprechaun in the wheelchair. So this one comes as kind of a little bit more unexpected, but still, you've had way too many jump scares in this film. Um, he tells her you gotta kill him with a uh, four leaf clover. If you touch him with a four leaf clover, it takes his magic away, makes him a physical being, and then you can kill him. Uh, so she leaves, gets the fuck out of there, looking for a four leaf clover. The leprechaun pops up again, another jump scare. She runs into the woods, finds uh, the cop who was dead. Uh, the leprechaun shows up, she gets in the cop car. The leprechaun rips the door off of the cop car, which I thought was funny. She knocks the leprechaun's eye out. You get a little bit of gore here. This film is really tame, but they throw in one or two little moments of gore and blood every now and then. Uh, this could almost be a children's flick, almost. And they take out, or a children's horror movie, they took out some of the excess gore that feels like it's slightly being forced in the film. The leprechaun rips the cop's eye out, replaces uh, his missing eye with the cop's eye. Nathan and Ozzy uh, show up at the exact mo right moment when the leprechauns get ready to attack her, and they gun the leprechaun down. But they do say that they heard her screaming, though, from the house. So I guess you can kind of buy it, but still, you know, kind of ridiculous that they show up at exactly the right time. But anyway, so they get back to the house. They're looking for a four-leaf clover. This film has way too much of a little, like, silly, magical children's vibe to it. They're like looking for four-leaf clover, and, she, and Ozzy's telling her, "You gotta believe, you gotta believe." And she's like, "All right, Ozzy, I believe, I believe." Uh, Jennifer Aniston says that her character's name is Tori, uh, I believe. I haven't mentioned it already. Um, and uh, she finds a four-leaf clover, obviously. Well, I, because she says she she believes, she believes. So that magically gives her the ability to find a four-leaf clover, and that's so fucking stupid, to be honest. <laughs> Beyond stupid, that's entered like. The dumbass script writing zone right there. So she's got a four leaf clover. Uh, a leprechaun shows up, attacks Alex, which is mildly amusing. I think it's funny that the leprechaun attacks Alex. Um, tries to put, I mean, I think it's funny he tries because he tries to put his fucking Alex's fucking head in a bear trap. That's funny. Um, Ozzy shows up and he's like, I got your last gold coin. I swallowed it. 
It's me you want, you little green son of a bitch. <laughs> that was funny. Leprechaun chases after him. Nathan shows up. One one thing I did chuckle at right here is he runs by Nathan, hits Nathan in the leg, and he goes, how's your leg? <laughs> uh, or Kevin Bacon 2.0, I mean. I know I've been calling him Nathan, but I should have just stuck to calling him Kevin Bacon 2.0. Uh, Leprechaun runs out there, takes off one of his belt uh, shoe buckles, and just starts fucking cutting up Ozzy's face. Um, Alex comes out there, takes some gum, puts the four-leaf clover uh, in the gum, uh, puts it in a slingshot, and he says, Hey, Lep, fuck you, Lucky Charms, and then shoots it down the Leprechaun's throat. That's a, that's a funny line. That line is okay. It suits this film, definitely. He shoots it down the Leprechaun's throat. Leprechaun uh, swallows it, starts like fucking dissolving. Seems like they saved all their budget for this one special effects scene right here. Leprechaun starts dissolving, his body does melting and evaporate, and you get like this little magical, like glow lighting effect around the Leprechaun's body, and he falls down the well. Um, that was okay. Most of their budget was in that scene. Um, of course, Leprechaun's not not fully dead. He starts coming back out of there. Sorry about that other little jump cut right there. That was uh that was my daughter. If you heard her voice in the background, yeah, that was my daughter. She was she she was wanting to check on me and see what I was doing. But anyway, I I think the forces are aligned to keep me from finishing this review here for this film. But yeah, just to cap it all off, the leprechaun falls down in the well. Um you think he's dead, but he's not. He starts coming back up out of the well. Uh Nathan runs over there, or Kevin Bacon two point runs over there, I mean, knocks the leprechaun back down the well. Throws some gasoline down there. Well, pours the gasoline down in the bottom of the well. Throws a match down there, and it causes the whole entire well to explode. And I'm like, what? Not never seen that before. I don't even think. I'm even, pretty sure that's not even possible. <laughs> but anyway, it's it's still still a decent little you know scene. Once again, it seems like they saved all their budget for this evening here for the leprechaun dissolving and for the explosion. But um. So after that, you're pretty much sure the Leprechaun's dead. Everybody's fine. None of none of the main cast dies in here. Um, the police finally show up. The police show up, of course, of course, after everything's already over, uh, <laughs> which I find hilarious, but that happens in a lot of horror films. Um, so all the main characters are fine, and you, the ending of the film is a cop's looking down a well, and you hear the leprechaun down in the bottom of the well saying, Curse this well, me, sh me soul shall dwell till I find my magic and breaks my spell. So it's a cliche ending. The horror villain isn't even dead. So all in all, this film was an okay film. It's an okay uh, horror comedy, silly, stupid B movie, which is what it's trying to be. It plays it too serious sometimes, I think. And uh, the comedy sometimes doesn't match up with the, the tone of the film because the comedy is a little bit too silly and doesn't match up with the film. And the way they have the Leprechaun act sometimes is too silly. It doesn't mesh together completely because the writing's not as great as it should be. But um, all in all, it's a two-star film. It's an okay film for a stupid, silly movie about a killer Leprechaun. That's a obviously a B-horror film. It's okay. Um... They set up for a sequel at the end that's never picked up on because every one of the movies has no continuity with each other. Uh, so I'll see you guys again with Leprechaun 2. But all in all, this is an okay two-star film. And before I end it, I just want to say that if you're a fan of like silly, ridiculous uh, horror films that just have silly plots but are, but are uh, slightly entertaining, then I'd say check this one out. But if you're wanting like a really high grade horror comedy, stick to something like Return of the Living Dead because you're not going to get that here. So I'll see you guys again with my review for Leprechaun 2.